Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR news for August 27th on a nice, chillaxing Sunday, which is always a good thing before the work week. Uh, speaking of that, the week after this week, to coincide kind of with the Labor Day holiday here, I'm going to be doing a staycation. And the wife and I, we love traveling, but I also love staycations, right? It's catch up time, honeydew list time, enhance the man cave time, reset my phys, uh, fitness. I'd given my body some weightlifting uh, time off because of an elbow injury. So I'll be doing the reset, restarting that up. Yeah, so just excited. And of course, VR stuff, the list, quote unquote, which has things that interested me, your recommendations, suggestions, whatever, to actually put a big dent in that. If not, polish it off completely while I'm at home in the comfort of my own man cave that should be awesome so just in the in the preamble here uh, raw data was a game that i was going to hold off on playing because having been a software tester i know when you see too much of a game during the critical development stage you tend to get bored of it and by the time it's released you don't even want to look at it right and that was definitely the case for me and other colleagues you know i started off in quality assurance testing at electronic arts before moving into a different area of development. And yeah, absolutely, for most of us, you tested a game, you got your free copy, you gave it away because you didn't even want to look at it, right? Or kept it as a memento shrink wrapped, right? But most of us gave the damn thing away or went to GameStop or EB and sold it, traded it, whatever, right? But uh, yeah, for some reason, Raw Data's last update I couldn't resist. I'm glad I didn't. I'll have a second video. That'll be on my staycation. And uh, then after that, I probably will wait because I, I do want it to feel fresh and new when the full version is released. But uh, look for that. Uh, the other game that I'm hoping to see within the next few weeks is the Serious Sam VR game. I don't think we're going to have to wait as long as we will for Doom, right? And Fallout 4, obviously. But... Uh, that's on my radar, and I'm hoping, hoping uh, it's within the next few weeks. Now, if you love horror movies, which I do, and I love all kinds of horror movies, I love pretty much every genre, right? But horror movies are kind of a guilty pleasure. Uh, if a movie can transcend that magical line of being, taking itself so seriously and being so bad that it's actually good, I love that even more, right? And in my opinion, nobody does that better than the Japanese in the splatter gore category. In fact, me and the buddy that you uh, sometimes see in the background on the Friday night gaming sessions, kind of one of our fun pastimes, usually during that gaming night, is we will watch a Japanese splatter gore film. The two favorite, if you would all like the genre, guys, you have to see these. Tokyo Gore Police, Machine Girl, that's all I'm going to say. Get them, watch them, love them. <laughs> They're that good. Well, there's a North American movie called Daylight's End, which was a horror movie, post-apocalyptic setting. They have a VR version of that movie now. It's available on Steam. It's a limited form of interaction where you can shoot the guns of the game in kind of like a target mode. And as you unlock chapters, you get to use better guns from the movie, right? So I purchased it more for the movie, but I figured with the VR component, you know, I can throw that in and maybe feature it here as a video. So uh, just installed it, haven't tried it. Uh, if it looks like something interesting, I will cut a video around it. So let's get into the news, guys. The uh, first story I just thought was really inspiring, really freaking cool. And uh, it's a creation from a guy named Matthew Wahlberg, and it's featured on Hackaday.com. Essentially, what he did, he couldn't afford a Vive or a Rift. So he got a Google Cardboard, and he really wanted to be able to have gun tracking. So, like most other people, okay, maybe not like most other people, he created it himself for about 15 bucks worth of parts. And what he did, basically, is he bought um, a Wi-Fi wireless transceiver module called the ESPN8266 uh, model. I'll have a link for it below about nine bucks US uh, cardboard. And what he did is he created a large fiducial marker on cardboard that the camera for, from his phone picks up 
with the use of Unity. So he's using Unity, uh, an app called Vuforia, which, you know, adds some augmented reality capability. He basically programmed his own gun tracking, and it just looks cool. It looks hilarious in that the paddle thing that he created literally looks like if you asked a kid, okay, you gave him like paper mache, if anyone who knows what that is, build me a ping pong paddle. That's what this thing would look like. <laughs> like it literally looks like this horrible cardboard ping pong paddle. But the good thing about it is the functionality, right? So using this, he's able to actually have gun tracking. He created his own game, which if you're into anime at all and you've seen Attack on Titan, he uses free Unity animated zombies. They basically look like the Titans on Attack of Titan, right? The slow lumbering walk, nailed it with these things. But it was to test his uh, gun tracking and his movement. So he's got two buttons on this cardboard handle, right? One of them is for shooting the gun. The other is for moving, which I thought was really, really cool. Yeah, check it out. Uh, link is below. And it just amazes me because think about this. This is the main reason I wanted to show this uh, article was you can go cheap badly. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Or you can go cheap and still benefit from innovation. And this is an example where if a third party can do what he did right, for still under a hundred bucks, you could get the cool cardboard and have a gun device that offers you tracking, right? Because um, I'm sure they could work that out and you would have full tracking and motion because that's the one component for me was the positional tracking and other types of tracking that, you know, Daydream will introduce the, the, the gun tracking or the hand tracking anyways, but Google Cardboard, Gear VR don't have, right? But this could all be added for fairly cheap to all of these devices. So hats off to Matthew. I just thought that looked really freaking cool. It's outside the box thinking. I just love that. So yeah, speaking of generic, cheap knockoff stuff, some of this is going to be preaching to the choir guys. But if you know a family member or a friend who's thinking about it, just say no. Be a good friend, right? And I'm talking about the incredible number of knockoff Google Cardboard type devices that are out there. The only thing good about them is the price, right? And unfortunately, it makes these things so tempting and then ultimately so disappointing. And the reason is, the main one is what we've talked about. It's going to give VR a black eye because word of mouth is a powerful form of advertising and marketing, right? And when it's based on a subset of technology that really doesn't reflect VR as a whole, it's ultimately it's going to be damaging when it doesn't need to be. And that is the freaking problem, right? So we need to make sure that we're educated as friends, as family members on what constitutes bovine steaming heaps of dung and stuff that actually is going to benefit them, right? So I always try to say, look, Google Cardboard, yes, it can be purchased, but here are the limitations, right? Educate them on what those limitations are without being preachy, without being what you know over the top or too technical. Just lay it out and make them clear on what those limitations are, right? Try to encourage to save up for a better if you can, but stay away from those ones that sound too good to be true because we all know if it sounds too good to be true, it probably freaking is too good to be true, right? And like I said, there's a dime a dozen of these, a lot of them in the Chinese market, for example. The author for so many of those devices, his big complaint, focus. Now, if you can't nail focus, if you've got an out of focus product, You've basically killed the VR immersion from the get-go. If you can't do focus, you are not doing VR, my friends. And unfortunately, too many of these cheap knockoff units can't even freaking focus, which is horrible and a deal breaker in my opinion, right? So if you can, be good friends, be good buddies, be good family members, and try without being preachy or sounding arrogant just to educate them and keep them away from this crap, which is going to put a black eye on VR, right, for the rest of us. And uh, yeah, I'm going to link to some of these and that article, but you can see 
some of these look really good, right? But that's all they are. They look good. So kind of speaking of other people um, and addictions and things, I hate personally. I can't stand, because I know hate's a strong word, but I can't freaking stand blaming human behavior on an inanimate object, right? Whether it's a gun or whether it's, you know, Tipper Gore talking about video game violence, whatever it is, right? Human beings have to take responsibility for their actions. I'm not saying there aren't catalysts. I'm not saying there aren't, you know, circumstances that drove a person to do something. Sure, fair enough. But blaming it, like the old witch hunt against Dungeons and Dragons and video games, drove me absolutely bonkers in the day, right? Because science has shown time and time again that there is no connection between video game violence and real world violence over and over, yet we hear it and it comes up over and over again and it should just be shot dead and put out to pasture, right? Well, there are still truths to that. Look, I'm somebody who has an addictive personality, right? And for me, my addiction has always been gaming, thankfully. And mostly for the better, sometimes for the worse, right? Thankfully, while I've experimented with drugs, they just haven't done it for me. And even the beer, like I said, for those of you who've asked me directly, generally it's one beer. That's it. Friday, Saturday, yeah, the one liter beer Stein, and there are other exceptions. But for the most part, it's one beer. One beer that I have. Two, rarely. Never drink to excess. When the fitness part starts again, I'll probably eliminate it most days. And that's, you look at older videos, you see me doing water and cider and, and other things, right? So the point is gaming has been an addiction for me. And there were negative times. EverQuest, you know, known as Evercrack for a reason. World of Warcraft. If you look at my time played, and time played is actual hours, right? For EverQuest, it was 119 days. So yeah, four months with this character. Four real world months. 24 hours a day, right? There's no sleeping here. There's actual play time I spent in EverQuest with this character which is crazy. World of Warcraft probably quintuple that, right? I bet you it was a year to a year and a half of real world time I spent in a video game. So yeah, I get addiction, right? And this latest article talks about shopping. And the company in question is Alibaba. And the common thing with, with most addictions is that with the exception of opiates, which substitute dopamine, but most addictions increase dopamine in your brain, right? They create an extra dopamine drip, enhanced. So you get addicted to, and it's whether it's food or video games, that dopamine trigger, right? Well, it looks like the folks at Alibaba, with scientific precision, have literally done a checklist to say, okay, look, we need to do this, 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 and this for shopping addicts, right? We need to have the bright lights, the music, the personalized store tour, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Literally, check out the video. I'll have the link below. And it's hilarious, but kind of scary at the same time, right? Ultimately, again, the responsibility lies with the person. But if you have family members who have a shopping addiction, you know, and I know a lady, shopping channel was her thing. She spent thousands a month on the shopping channel. Thankfully, she's not a very tech-savvy person. If she was, I have no doubt Amazon and eBay would be her go-to places for buying stuff, right? Well, Alibaba takes that to the whole next level. So, And it's not to say it doesn't have good legitimate uses. Of course it does. Just like I don't believe in the whole video game violence thing, there are always exceptions and there are always people weak to begin with that, you know... It's not the doom that set them off. It could have been a box of, you know, a bad bowl of Cheerios, right? But the point is, you can create something virtually to cater to an addiction, right? Uh, the climb for people who get adrenaline rush and dopamine from climbing could increase when they play that game, right? 
So yeah, the shopping, have a look at it and uh, let me know what you think because it will be a reality. It's going to be something increasingly as a society we're going to have to address, right? Because there will be people that are impacted or at least have it act as a catalyst. Now, the next news piece I want to talk about has to do with Google Daydream. We still don't have a lot of specs on it, but I'm going to provide a link. It shows a little bit more of what what it'll look like and I love the remote very reminiscent of the oculus rift one that looks good and uh, yeah they talk about a bunch of things but they don't get into the most important but uh, but have a look I'm not going to beat that one to death suffice it to say it's probably a device I will pick up um, so if I look and I've mentioned this before but it, it it will change from time to time the three VR devices left for me to purchase are of course the gear VR replacement which is tracking wise almost arrived at the mailbox uh, probably the daydream I'll get that and for sure Sony PlayStation virtual reality those are the three VR left uh, and possibly a 360 camera at some point this year all right the uh, the last thing I want to talk about has to do with uh, basically neuroscience and surgery so there's uh, a hospital Hogue Memorial out of Orange County and uh, Dr. Robert uh, Lewis, he's a neurosurgeon there, gets lots of sales calls, which I also get at work, which are usually a hassle and freaking annoying. But one of these really caught his interest because it dealt with his profession directly uh, and one of the most important parts of what he does, which is the actual neurosurgery. So uh, the company that he's working with, and the link will detail it, have a piece of software called Surgical Navigation Advanced Platform developed by some ex-Israeli fighter pilots because it's shocking what these neurosurgeons are actually using. They're using black and white 2D images to help them prep for surgery, right? So to have this come along, it was like night and day and this is where VR can just so benefit, right? Uh, the medical industry they are able to fly into the brain. And it makes sense. These guys were fighter pilots after all, right? But at 1080p detail and really drill down into MRIs of the brain, right? 3D constructs of the brain. With 4K and 8K, that's only going to get better. But just to have this tool out there for neurosurgeons, right? It means that that robot body that I'm hoping to one day have to let me live, you know, basically forever uh, will be a reality. And I say that partly joking because, damn, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Because that's one of the biggest regrets I have about getting older, missing all the cool shit in the future. That will suck. So go, go, robot body. <laughs> all right, guys, as always, cheers, and we will definitely, definitely catch you on the flip side.